Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be attracting an ex back when you should and shouldn't make dates. Well, I've got an email. This is from a guy. He got dumped by his ex-fiance seven months ago. He says they went through a very stressful period in their lives. It changed his behavior. He displayed a lot of unattractive behavior, which led to his dumping. So he takes full accountability for that. I'd say probably 80% on average of the guys that come to my work are in some kind of similar situation. They got dumped and they didn't want to be dumped. Nine times out of 10, it's the result of them displaying a lot of really unattractive behavior that just turns their girl off completely. Now, whereas I typically always assume that we're dealing with a normal, healthy woman, obviously, unless, of course, there's pretty obvious things in the email that illustrate that she belongs to the streets. So like in this particular case, this ex-fiance and him, they have a dog together. And so they get together to transfer the dog back and forth. But in this last seven months, she started seeing some other dude. I don't know how serious it is, but part of this guy's problem, because obviously he wants his fiance back, but part of his problem is he's interacted with her a lot. And recently he thought, hey, now's my chance. He creates an opportunity in the evening to make dinner together, hang out, have fun, hook up, or so he thinks. She comes over. She's very standoffish, but she's seeing another guy. And so there's some things that he's kind of not really paying attention to. So there are times when you should make a date and follow what's in seven principles, get an ex back. And then like in this particular case, he's trying to make dates with this girl even though she's seeing somebody. And so when a guy does that, when a guy still is trying to make dates with an ex that they know is involved with another guy or seeing another guy, <clears throat> what happens is they get stuck in friend zone. And when things are going well with the other guy, she's cold and distant, but still reaches out. She gets attention and validation from him. And then she becomes cold and distant again. And so it's counterproductive to try to make dates. You want somebody who's single, ready, willing, able, and open to date. And so she's involved with another guy. So in that case, you should be holding you accountable and say, hey, it's not appropriate for us to get together or talk about anything because you're seeing somebody. If you want to get together and talk, that'd be great, but you got to be single. And that's part of his problem. This, this comes down to setting and enforcing healthy boundaries. Because seven months have gone by, and he's – when you – because you can look at this and say, why is he trying seven months later when she's already involved with another guy? Well, that's what happens to a lot of dudes. They get dumped and they stay in her life hoping that she's going to change her mind. And they end up just basically becoming another one of her beta male orbiters. And what she sees is that nothing's changed in your behavior. You're not dating anybody else. You're not meeting anybody else. There's no fear on her part that she's going to potentially lose you to another woman. And like the video newsletter that I did um, the other day, we were talking about why it was all about mindset, mindset, why you shouldn't want your ex back, why you shouldn't try to get your ex back. Because in this case, just like in the other one, this guy got dumped and you never try to keep somebody that doesn't want to keep you. If they screw it up, if they end the relationship, guess what? They got to fix it. And when you don't allow them the space to do that, you get stuck in blue ball zone, which is basically where this guy is at. And so what happens is the longer you stay involved with your ex's life, trying to get her back, trying to get her to spend time with you, seeking her attention and validation, a man who loves and values himself and has self-respect is just not going to sit around and wait for that. If he gets dumped, he's moving on. He says, hey, it's been great. Thanks for the memories. If you ever change your mind, get in touch. But I'm not waiting on you. And his problem was he basically communicated that he put his whole life on hold while she went and explored things with another guy. And so seven months later, now he's come across my work and he's trying to implement it. But you can tell he's cherry picking a little bit and not really paying attention to the reality of the situation. So you want to avoid getting stuck in these situations like this guy has. That's why it's so important if you get dumped, that you disengage and you move on with your life. And as a man, you focus on your outcome and your mission. You want a girl that wants to be with you for your personal life. 
obviously whatever your mission and purpose is, your professional life, no matter what, whether you're single, you're in a relationship, you're, that's always priority number one. A man's got to handle those things. But in this case, this guy got dumped, and instead of focusing on dating or being with somebody who's ready, willing, able, and open to dating him, he put himself into the category of one of her male orbiters, and he got stuck there. And so many months went by that now she's dating another guy, but yet she was engaged to this dude, so she's more emotionally bonded to him. But the problem is he's just lingering. He's just hanging around, and she can tell that he, in essence, has put his whole life on hold waiting for her to come back, and that's not attractive. She has to feel that if she doesn't get her act together, that she's going to potentially lose you to another woman. And if there's no fear of that on her part, She's not going to do anything. She'll stay involved with somebody else. Because the reason she went to seek somebody else is because this guy acted so unattractive that she no longer had any feelings for him. So you want to avoid doing what this guy did. So he says, hi, coach. Thank you so much for your work. I have all your books, and I've read 3% Man about 30 times in the last four years. It's helped me so much. You're a true gen. Well, if you read my book 30 times in the last four years and you stayed this engaged with your ex fiance it's like, you weren't paying attention, dude. When you get dumped like this, it's like, you got to move on. He says, my ex fiance of three years broke up with me seven months ago due to massive stresses in our personal lives causing my behavior to turn her off. So in other words, you stopped being the guy that you fell in love with. You stopped displaying all the attractive behavior that turns women on, and started, more than likely, you couldn't handle the stress. You became a jack-in-the-box. You displayed a lot of beta male behavior. Maybe you made the mistake of trying to make her your mommy and your therapist. I had a guy just recently I was talking to. He'd, he'd been with his wife over 30 years. They had raised kids together. Kids had gone off college, done well, had already started great lives of their own. He had a health scare. And what happened was he made the mistake of making his wife He went from always being the alpha in the family to basically making his wife his mommy. And she lost all feelings of attraction and she moved out and he wanted to re-attract her. And so getting him to to act once again like the alpha is the only thing that's going to cause her to feel attraction for him once again. So that's typically what happens in these because... The guy, you know, most guys think, hey, I went through a, a difficult time. I got to be able to lean on my wife. But you turn her into your mommy for a year or two. It's like a matter of months, sure. But when it goes on for a couple of years and you're not taking care of the things you need to take care of, she's not going to feel safe and comfortable trusting your masculine core. So it doesn't matter whether you've been together three years or 30 years. You act like a beta male and you turn your girl and your mommy and your therapist and you're going to make her pussy drier than the Sahara Desert. That's just a fact of life. If you don't like it, you can cry to the big man upstairs. I didn't make women this way. You're supposed to be the leader of the household even when things aren't going well. Even when you're sick. Even when you lost your job. Even when you're going through a difficult time. Even when you lose all your money in the stock market or crypto or whatever it happens to be. you got to keep grinding and keep moving forward. But if you turn your girl into your, mo- into your mommy and your therapist... Eventually, she's going to tire of it, lose attraction for you, and leave you. That's just a fact of life. The guys in the red pill community constantly crying about that. Hi, me, hi, me, as the excuse for their beta male behavior. If you act unattractive for enough of a period of time, all women are going to leave you. That's just the way it is. You're supposed to be the strong one. You're supposed to be more masculine than the woman. And when you act less masculine than the woman for extended periods of time, she's going to lose respect and interest in you and eventually they will leave you that's just the way it is you don't like it don't date women i'm just here telling you how it is he says we now co-parent the huge 50 kilogram dog we raised together and her behavior during interactions over the months has oscillated between cold and emotionless and explosions of anger and sadness and genuine flirting and banter where she would frequently turn a quick dog handover into her spending a couple hours hanging out. Well, again, if you're going to do that, it has to be in the context of making a date together. 
And so it just sounds like he's just constantly been hanging, hanging on her every word, dropping what he's doing to be at her beck and call, to spend the day with her or whatever. Eventually, at some point, especially if, if one or both of you gets in a serious relationship, if you get a new girl, she's not going to want your ex-girlfriend who maybe she stays single or she's not really serious with her. Any new woman you get in a relationship is not going to like the fact that you're still doing this exchange with a dog. At, at some point, somebody gets to take the dog and it's theirs permanently. He says, a few weeks ago, I told her I wanted to extend the periods between dog handovers because I wanted to prioritize my healing from the breakup. So in other words, he's telling her he wants a little distance because he's starting to recognize that hanging on her every word and always being available and being one of her beta male orbiters is getting him nowhere. So he says, a couple days later, she asked if I would be interested in meeting up to talk about some things on her mind. So I set a date in my place to cook dinner thinking this was it. I was calm, charming, and relaxed, and it was really fun. But even with serious flirting and banter throughout, she distanced herself after dinner, coldly sitting on the opposite side of the room, even after I suavely motioned for her to sit next to me. Yeah, there's another dude in the picture. and that's that. I mean, I've gone through this email already, but part of the problem is he's trying to make dates even though she's seeing another guy. And like I was saying earlier, he stayed way too engaged with her when he got dumped instead of moving on with his life. And if you're doing a quick turnover of the dog and she wants to hang out more and you just drop what you're doing to do that and then all you get is a peck on the cheek or a, a hug at the end of the night, it's like that's why you just don't do those things. You give her the attention and validation that you still are interested and you still want to work things out because remember she got turned off to the point where she wasn't even attracted to you anymore. And so she knows she can always go back to you, but she left because the feelings were gone. That's the important thing. The feelings were gone. And you kept hoping you were going to, if you spend enough time with her, her feelings are going to change. And the only thing that's going to develop those feelings of dread, because remember, it's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear, is if she knows you're having a good time, you're hard to get a hold of sometimes. If she texts you after 6 or 7 o'clock at night, you're not responding until 10 or 11 the next day. You should be dating. You should be moving on with your life. Again, what do you want for your personal life? You want somebody that really wants to be with you. You were engaged to her and she kicked you to the curb. So at this point, she really should only be a potential prospect of yours. But what you should really be doing is looking to start a new relationship with somebody new who isn't going to dump you so quickly and so easily. You have to have the attitude of just like we talked about in the video new, newsletter the other day about mindset, why you shouldn't try to get your ex back. And that's your problem here. You're trying to get your ex back and you haven't really done anything to move on with your life. And you telling her all these months later that you need to have distance so you can heal, all that communicates is that you're torn up emotionally over it. Now keep in mind, she's dating somebody else, probably sleeping with them at this point. And so now he has the leverage because you've put your personal life on hold and you've let her know that you're sitting around waiting on her. And now finally, after seven months, you're recognizing that it's not getting you anywhere. This should have happened seven months ago, but it is what it is. You didn't follow what was in the book. You cherry picked and you tried to bend the rules and it blew up in your face. She told me despite seeing someone new, she misses me and I'm the only man who's ever made her feel safe. Well, when you hear something like that, you just say, that's great. I'd love to see you. I'd love to give you a chance to win me back over and rekindle things, but I am not going to date you or be involved with you romantically in any way as long as you're dating a new guy. That's just not going to work for me. If you want a chance to win me back, then this other guy, you need to kick him to the curb. And I don't want to hear from you or want to hang out or really discuss anything unless you're single. Because I need to move on with my life. You made your decision. You blew up our relationship. You blew up our family. You blew up our engagement. All of our friends and family know what's happened. And it's all on you. So if you want a chance to win me back over and fix things, it's like you're not going to be calling me and wanting to hang out when you kind of have a new boyfriend. It's like that. that's just not going to work for me. Again, it should have never gotten to this point, but this guy did not follow what was in the book. 
it's obvious that he fell way down the mountain. <clears throat> she said that her head trusts me, but her heart doesn't yet. This is, again, it's like dangling the carrot. All she has to do is dangle it a little bit, and he's <laughs> like a little puppy dog. He says, I told her that was fine, but joke that I think we both know why she really wanted to come over. Well, again, you should be making dates at your place when you know she's seeing another guy and probably sleeping with him. That's just kind of stupid. Again, this is what happens when you cherry pick and don't really follow things. So he's projecting his fantasy onto this situation, onto his ex, and assuming she feels the same way while completely ignoring the reality that she's got a new boyfriend, it looks like. You're not going to, that's why she comes over and hangs out and sits on the other end of the room. So no hanky panky can happen. But deep down, she's still conflicted because she's got feelings. But the fact that you're willing to do this and give her a date in the evening, one of your few evenings that you have open a week, and then tolerate blue balls, it's obvious this has happened numerous times in the last seven months. You're trying to change her mind instead of letting her try to convince you why you should give her another chance. Your mindset is totally the opposite of the email video newsletter we did on Wednesday. He says, so to let me know when she fancies coming over again with something more than dinner in mind, but not to message me otherwise. Well, I would again reiterate, it's like you're involved with another guy. It's not appropriate to be hanging out because what you're basically trying to do is get her to cheat on the new guy that she's with. And if you're successful at doing that, why wouldn't she do that to you next time you start acting like a beta male for extended periods of time or next time you try to turn her into your mommy and your therapist again? She reached out a week later to say hi and asked how I was doing and that she needed me to have the dog one extra day three months in advance due to work. He says, very unusual. So I tried to set up another date. He's like, come on, man. This is... (laughs) You don't try to set up dates with women that have other guys they're involved with and sleeping with. It's like, come on. That is just supreme duncery. I know you claim to have read the book 30 times, but I don't see how. I've never seen somebody read the book 30 times and then do these kinds of things. He says, very unusual, so I tried to set up another date, but received, we're not in a position to be friends, so I won't be coming over. So does that sound like she's trying to get another chance with him or the other way around? This guy is totally seeking her attention and validation, and that's why he's getting nowhere. He says, it hit me hard, but I replied, it's a good job I wasn't inviting you over as a friend then. Just let me know if you change your mind and left her alone. You've got to tell her that you're not going to get involved with her as long as she has another guy that she's sleeping and dating with. Come on, dude. He says, weeks pass, and she's messaged me again to ask if we can meet up this week and discuss planning the dog for the next few months. Unusual again, we already have set a timetable. I feel like I should just say no, as it's not explicitly asking to hang out, and if it is legitimate, it's unnecessary. So I would just text her back, as long as you're dating another guy, it's not appropriate for you and I to be getting together. Our plans are already set for our dog many months in advance, so there's no reason to get together. If you're single and you're no longer seeing that guy, that's a different story. But as long as you're dating this other dude, I'm not going to be involved and we're not going to be hanging out together. That's where you went wrong, dude. You've just been too afraid to set and enforce healthy boundaries and you've been a pleaser and you, in essence, have created this situation by being too weak. But you being too weak is what led to getting her to the point where she was so turned off she left you. He's like, currently I have two great casual girls on the side who are both asking for exclusivity and yet I'm still very much in love with my ex. She doesn't care about you, dude. She ain't feeling anything, and she's dating and sleeping with another guy. She's not even a candidate. He's like, I can't even get the distance to get over her because I can't let go of my dog. Do you have any advice? Let her have the dog completely. Say, why don't you keep the dog from now on? I want to move on with my life. Good luck to you and your new boyfriend. But it's like part of that is that you're using the dog to kind of hold on to her and it's like again i can tell from your actions and what she's doing the fact that she's already got a new guy in her life you're doing the opposite 
of what the book teaches. Despite how you try to kind of cover it up in your email here, it's pretty obvious what's what's been going on here, that you're just literally doing the opposite of what I teach. And that's why you're in this situation. So I, when you see these messages from her, I'm like, hey, you're dating somebody. It's not appropriate for us to get together. Our, we've already made all the arrangements with a dog many months in advance. There's no reason for us to get together. If you're single, if you're no longer seeing that guy and you'd love to get together and make dinner and try to convince me why I should give you another chance at being my girl again, it's like I'd be open to that. I can't promise anything, but I'd be open to that. But as long as you're involved with this guy, it's not appropriate for you and I to be getting together or discussing anything because at this point – you belong to another guy. And I'm seeing a couple other ladies and it's just not appropriate. That's how I would handle that particular situation. So if you got a question or challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.